Digikey and Adafruit present. I on MPI this week, Lady Ada, is from Bosch. That's right. I'm excited because I actually heard about this sensor a while ago, the BME688, but it's finally in stock at DigiKey. And I didn't really want to do an I on MPI unless you could actually go and pick it up, and they have a lot in stock. So this week's INPI is from uh, Bosch Sensor Tech. They make um, all sorts of sensors, including some of our favorites, the BMP 280, BME 280, and of course the BME 680, a lot of very popular sensors. So this week's is the BME 688. You can see here, it's got the 688. Sounds familiar, right? Sounds a lot like the BME 680. Uh, that's because it's very similar to the BME 680. The BME 680 um, is, you know, I think the B is for Bosch and E is environmental. And the 680 stands for it has pressure, humidity, temperature, and gas sensing capability. So this is a sensor that we've already stocked, the BME 680. And the 88, or the 688, is the next generation of it. And what's really cool about the sensor, the 680, is that it's like the only sensor we've ever seen that can do pretty much all of your environmental sensing in one package at a really good price. It does temperature, yes. It has humidity, yes, barometric pressure, so you can do altitude as well, and gas sensing, so you can do environmental sensing, uh, volatile organic compounds, so like air quality sensing um, as well. So what's new with the 688? Well, the 680, I'm, I'm glad you asked, because I also was like, what is new? So when you've got, you know, the way the gas sensor works, it's called a metal oxide uh, semiconductor, and basically there there's an exposed oxide layer that reacts with gases in the environment like you know have it react with methane or alcohols or or you know there's carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide whatever and when it reacts with them the resistance of that oxide layer changes and you know the thing about oxide sensors is, is there this is pretty much the only way that we do solid state sensing it works quite well it's inexpensive but there are some variations from uh, sensor to sensor and not only that, but temperature and humidity affect them. So you, you having the temperature and humidity sensor in the BME 680 is handy because you'll actually use the data to normalize the gas sensor data. But I think what people, the folks at Bosch realize is that anytime you have something that's dependent on another environmental factor, you might be able to kind of use that or abuse that in a different way. So in this case, the BME 688 has this heater underneath that heats the metal oxide layer. Um, and what that can do is, is first, of course, get um, you know any water condensation off of it, but can also change the reactivity of that metal oxide layer so it reacts differently to gases. And by changing the heater profile, by changing the heat level quickly between multiple different levels and doing different measurements, you can like kind of sense different things um, and maybe not like a specific, like not, it's not like, oh, this heater profile is good for methane and this heater profile is good for, you know, ethanol. It's more like if you go through these cycles and you try to measure a scent or an emission, you might be able to detect it between, from other emissions. So let's we'll talk about like what that means. So um, each BME sensor has the heater profile and the duty cycle. Like I mentioned, the heater profile and duty cycle is that microheater that, um, when you turn it on and off, it's set to different settings. It affects the sensitivity and react reactability of that metal oxide layer. Um, you can try multiple different profiles and then expose the sensor to what you want to sense and collect data. And again, you know, what are you actually sensing? It's not kind of not clear, but by looking for patterns of data, you can then train uh, an algorithm, like a machine learning algorithm, to look at those changes based on the heater profile to detect differences or unique scents. So to do that, um, you know, they recommend uh, going with their dev kit. This dev kit's not available quite yet, but it'll probably be available soon um, on DigiKey. It actually it has Adafruit stuff in it. It has a Huzzah 32 and ESP32. And then on top, it has a feather wing with eight BME uh, 688. So, you know, it's, it's a it's a bit of a kit. It's also got two buttons. And it's got an SD card slot as well. And the reason it has eight of these, you're like, why do you need eight? Do you need eight for your final thing? No. The reason you have eight is you can have each one have a different heater profile. You can also have 
um, each one just because each mock sensor is a little bit different in general. So you can have eight different uh, data samples. So you can make sure that you're um, not being too specific with your training data. You want to have like multiple data points to, to because again, there's this variation from sensor to sensor. Um, but you, you program it with the code that Bosch gives you. There, there's an example that you load onto the ESP32. And then um, in their video, for example, you can put it in uh, some espresso beans and you take 30 minutes worth of data. Um, you can put it in filter coffee beans and take 30 minutes of data. And you can, of course, leave it on the table, not exposed to any coffee and take data. And then the dev kit saves that data to an SD card, which you then pop into your computer and load into um, the AI studio from Bosch, which is a software that runs on Windows that takes that particular data file and here you open it and then we'll plot the data. So here you can see the plot. So you can see, you're like, well, what's the purple, red, blue? So those are different. There's, there's kind of actually, if you look at the, at the bottom, there's actually kind of like red, yellow, green. There's a couple different colors. And the top one also has two traces. So these are the eight different sensors. And you see that they all kind of follow along each other, although there's a DC offset. And the DC offset, I, don't th I think it's just because there's variation from sensor to sensor. Um, I don't, or it could be that they have a heater profile. I wasn't, wasn't actually sure by watching the, the, or reading the demonstration of why there's variations, but I do know that mock sensors do have some. So it could be that this is just, you know, each sensor has enough DC offset. However, if you look at the patterns, you can kind of see the four different sections, right? There's the beginning sensor section where it kind of heats up. And then it's exposed to you know the espresso coffee, and you can see the data drops a little bit, right? There's a little bit of a, of a dip um, in the cycles. You can see that the heat of profile cycles. And then in the third one, it's a different thing. It's exposed to it rises up a little bit. And then the fourth one, they all drop again. So there's this, you can definitely see that there's change in the sensors between those four. But if you were trying to program this as a programmer, it would be really annoying and frustrating because like there's so much little variation. How do you detect it? This is where machine learning comes in. So what you do is for those first four sections, um, you see here, uh, the first one is normal air, then espresso, and then another normal air, and then filter coffee. You can take as many data samples as you want. This one has four. You label them. And then the software, um, you, you tell it, what do you want to train the two classes? And you say, look for the coffee class, class A, espresso or filter, and then the normal air, you put the other two measurements, and you say, I want you to train on that data so that you can um, determine whether or not I'm being exposed to coffee, I can sense coffee. And again, it's, it's not hard to make one sensor detect coffee or not. The problem is if you have a product and each sensor is a little bit different, how can you make an algorithm that is generalizable enough that it won't be specific to like that brand of coffee and that particular sensor and that particular humidity? And that's what the training does. That's why you want to use machine learning does the training and it pops out a file and then you can of course try different heat air profiles etc you can also analyze it it'll tell you you know based statistically on the model and data that you have how good is it at detecting uh, in this case it's you know 93 percent accurate which is, is just excellent um, if you're not getting the accuracy you want you know of course you can take more data and then train against that data or test against that data try different heater profiles so they sort of say look you know tweak the numbers a little bit until you're able to really get detectable differences. And then what you do is you load the BSEC library, the environmental sensing library from Bosch. Um, it's a pre-compiled binary blob, but they do, as you see here, have lots of different platforms from the Mega AVRs to um, Cortex M0s and M3s and M4s and Espressif chips, 32s and H66s. If there's a chip that you want to use that's missing here, like maybe a RISC-V chip, um, tell Bosch, they're very responsive and they'll probably compile for you the, the binary needed. It is, you know, a trade secret of theirs, so they don't release the source code of actually how they, they do the training analysis. Um, but you can at least, you know, get that blob and then you compile it in. You feed that uh, BSEC file that's generated by the training software. It's small. It fits onto your microcontroller. And now your BME688 in the field can be used to detect different senses and objects. So, All right. very neat because it's available on DigiKey. It's available on DigiKey. Starting to see more machine learning and AI make its way to sensors. You remember we had the audio sensor that did wake word detection on its own. Uh, we've had a couple of um, motion sensors uh, from ST that could do um, 
you know, a, a basic machine learning as well. So we're starting to see more smarts get into sensors. And I think this is a, a good example of a sensor that has variation. So it's very hard for humans to program it, but it's very, um, the patterns are reliable enough that you can train, um, you know, basic machine learning or, or neural networks on and get good data. So it is in stock. It's backwards compatible with the BME 680. So even if you don't use the AI stuff, uh, it's still an excellent sensor for temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and uh, gas sensing use cases. I have a video. Bosch Sensor Tech introduces the BME 688 gas sensor together with the BME AI Studio, a data-driven software tool to explore, validate, and deploy sensor use cases with the power of machine learning. And it all begins with our new sensing hardware, the BME 688, the first environmental sensor with AI. It digitizes temperature, pressure, humidity and gas data. And by using machine learning algorithms, the BME 688 is able to measure and recognize the unique fingerprint of different gas mixtures. Here's an example. Do you like coffee? Let's use the sensor to distinguish various types of coffee. Just measure the smells of different coffee beans with the BME Board X8. Then launch BME AI Studio and easily import and label the recorded data. You can then use this data to create an individual algorithm custom tailored just for your use case. That was just one example. BME 688 enables a vast range of new use cases. And you don't have to be a trained computer scientist or neural net expert. BME AI Studio is designed with great user experience and comprehensive documentation to help, guide and accompany you while developing your customized algorithm. Bosch is continuing to push AI forward and with the BME AI Studio, our customers can now bring Sensor AI into their own products. All right. And also there's a shuttle board available from DigiKey if you search for BME 688. Uh, it's very nice because it, it has the sensor on the board with breakouts and capacitors. Uh, and there's a pinout available. It is set up for I2C or, or SPI. And we just pushed uh, update to our Adafruit um, Arduino BME 688 library or 680 library uh, to work with the 688. It uses the latest version of, of the um, uh, the Bosch API code for Arduino. Okay, and that is. Hi, I'm API.